name is Patrick Boyle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the second video in a series on financial derivatives, where I aim to take you from absolute beginner level through to expert level over the series of videos. In today's video, we're going to learn how derivatives are traded, what are the major derivative types, and what is the economic function of the derivatives market. These classes are all based on my book, Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives. Um, if you want to follow along with the book, um, an Amazon link is provided in the description below. So first let's learn how are derivatives traded. There's two groups of derivatives contracts and they're distinguished by the way that they are traded in the market. The first group are over-the-counter derivatives, and the second group are exchange-traded derivatives. Over-the-counter derivatives are contracts that are traded directly between two parties without going through an exchange. Products such as swaps, forward rate agreements, exotic options, and many other derivatives are typically traded in this way. The over-the-counter or OTC derivatives market is the largest market for derivatives. The OTC market is largely made up of banks, large corporations, and other highly sophisticated parties. Because over-the-counter derivatives are not traded on an exchange, there's no central counterparty. Thus, they are subject to counterparty risk. The risk of one party defaulting at settlement or at closure of the contract, like any ordinary legal contract. Despite the complexity and risks of over-the-counter trading, most transactions are quite standardized, with standardized documentation. There has been a large push in recent years from governments and financial regulators since the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 to bring a sizable proportion of the OTC markets onto clearing platforms in order to improve overall financial stability. And in a later video, I'll explain what a clearing house is in the derivatives market and why it might matter. Exchange-traded derivatives are those that are traded via a specialized derivatives exchange, such as the CME Group or Eurex. A derivatives exchange is a market where standardized contracts that have been defined by the exchange are traded. A derivatives exchange acts as an intermediary to all related transactions and takes margin payments from the customers who trade with them to act as a guarantee. Some types of derivative instruments also may trade on traditional exchanges. For instance, hybrid instruments such as convertible bonds or convertible preferred stock may be listed on stock or bond exchanges. Warrants or rights issues may be listed on equity exchanges. Most exchange-traded derivatives are traded electronically. One of the earliest examples of widespread electronic trading was on Globex, the CME Group's electronic trading platform that allows access to a variety of financial, foreign exchange and commodity markets. Most investors who wish to trade exchange-traded derivatives open an account with a derivatives broker or an investment bank and then trade with them using their broker's trading app or a third-party trading app. Next, let's talk about the major derivative contract types. The most common types of derivatives contracts are forwards. Forwards are an over-the-counter contract between two parties where payment takes place at a specific time in the future at today's predetermined price. Futures, which are an exchange-listed contract to buy or sell an asset on or before a future date at a price specified today. A futures contract is very similar to a forward contract but differs from a forward contract in that the futures contract is a standardized contract which is then backed by a clearinghouse working with an exchange where the contract can be bought and sold. The forward contract is a non-standardized over-the-counter contract written by the parties themselves. Options. Options are a derivative financial instrument that specify a contract between two parties for a future transaction 
on an asset at a reference price, which we call the strike price. The buyer of the option gains the right, but not the obligation, to engage in that transaction, while the seller incurs the corresponding obligation to fulfill the transaction. Options can be either exchange traded or over the counter. An option which conveys the right to buy something at a specific price is called a call option. An option which conveys the right to sell something at a specific price is called a put option. Warrants. Warrants are similar to options, are similar to a call option anyhow, but it's typically issued by a company on its own stock. And so when it's exercised, new equity is issued causing ownership dilution to common stockholders. Note that with all of these products, I'm always referring to the derivatives as contracts. And that's because they are all legal contracts between two parties. I'll explain this in greater detail in a future video, but you'll probably notice when you hear traders speak that they might talk about being long or short 100 contracts, for example. Our derivatives are not ownership of the underlying stock, bond, or index. They're simply contracts with payoffs that reference the price of that underlying instrument. Often in the press, you'll hear journalists saying that derivatives markets should be outlawed because they are just a form of legalized gambling and that they add no economic value. This is not true. Derivatives markets have a number of benefits that mean that they improve the world we live in and are generally good for society overall, even for people who do not transact in derivatives. The derivatives market reallocates risk from the risk averse to those willing to take risk with the expectation of a reasonable return. This ability to move risks around stimulates the economy as otherwise businesses might stop trading once they had reached a threshold of risk beyond which they were unwilling to go. The derivatives market allows participants to hedge and manage their existing economic exposures. Derivatives are essential tools to determine both current prices and a best estimate of future prices. Derivatives can improve market efficiency for the underlying asset. Investors can buy an S&P 500 future, for example, and have much lower trading costs than if they were to buy all 500 stocks individually. The use of derivatives can and does sometimes result in large losses. Often this can relate to an excessive use of leverage. In a future video, we'll talk about the risks of trading derivatives and look at some large losses that have happened in the past and see what can we learn from them. Well, it looks like you've made it all the way to the end of the video. If you found it useful, please hit the like button below or tell your friends about these videos. They might find them useful too. Um, do subscribe if you'd like to watch more of my videos when they come out. In the next video, we're going to learn about our first derivative, which is futures and forwards. See you soon. Bye.